Hey guys, this is James White with Freak Interviews, bringing you my top 10 products for the best of 2019. Now, although I specialize in ASEAN TV products, the recent decline in ASEAN TV items that on the store shelves has led me to expand to Amazon and Wish and beyond, so the products in this video will encompass all of those and not just ASEAN on TV, which means I had to sift through almost 200 products that I reviewed this year to pick from my best of the bunch. If you want to see the full reviews, I've got links in the description below and also links to purchase as well. Without further delay, let's get right to my top 10. Number 10 on my list is Socket Shelf, which is an ASEAN TV product. You plug it into your wall, you get extra sockets, you get USB ports, and you get a shelf. Now, there weren't a lot of ASEAN TV products released in 2019 on a significant level. But this is one that I actually thought exceeded my expectations a little bit better than I thought it would be. I found it more useful than I expected. In fact, I'm charging my phone right here. And as you can see, it's on the socket shelf. It's a pretty simple design, but it's actually pretty useful. Here's some scenes from my original socket shelf video. This is socket shelf. It's a as seen on TV, eight port surge protector. All right, here's the glorious shelf. Two plugs on this side, two in the front, two in the side, and you got two USB ports. But not only do I have better space optimized, but I still have four more outlets. So uh, I'm pretty happy with that. Shaving gel, miscellaneous, Q-tips, beard oil, more, I actually think I have more space. I think the socket shelf with this wide design actually might be a little bit better. I'm a little bit surprised. The As Seen on TV socket shelf comes out on top. This one has, I think, the best shelf of them all. It seems to have the most shelf space and the USB ports are in a convenient location. Number nine on my list and the first of five kitchen devices in my top 10 is the Power Air Fryer Oven 360, which I did way back in February. It's actually more of a small oven than an actual air fryer, but it does a great job of cooking small meals, of warming up items. It has a lot of uses. There's really a lot you can do with it, and it passed pretty much every test that I threw at it, including making a steak in there. So I think this device deserves a spot in my top 10, and here's some scenes from the original video. How about some toast? And I'm going to select toast. Oh, it's toasted. All right, let's up our game a little bit here with some steak. It is preheating. Oh, it's right at the top there, isn't it? All right, there's steak number one cut open. I think it was pretty good. It includes a pro-grade dehydrator, so I wanna try that out. All right, these are, are done now. I got the banana chips, came out pretty nice. And even my pineapple, not too bad. What do you guys think? There it goes, it fits in there. That's a four, just over four pound chicken. Beautiful, look at that. We have rotisserie chicken in the works. There we go, about 45 minutes. Like I said, the old one wouldn't have been able to handle something this big. Well, it looks pretty good. All right, this is how it looks. I think it came out pretty nicely. It seems well cooked. Let's see what we got here. I would say that after five hours, the pulled pork came out perfect. Ugh. Oh, you're here. Well, since you're here, this is number eight on my list, which is the beauty rest pillow that I compared to a more expensive memory foam back in October. This has actually become one of my favorite pillows that I use every day. So here's some scenes from my original comparison of beauty rest and a more expensive memory foam pillow. I'm comparing a $50 memory foam pillow from Beautyrest and a $155 memory foam from Tempur-Pedic. Let's open the Beautyrest now. All right, it feels maybe a little bit softer. Ventilated memory foam, which supposedly keeps the hot air away from you. Beautyrest feels much softer. This feels pretty firm. This feels pretty soft. Here, this is one large memory foam piece, but it does appear to have a coating on one side. Wow, that's pretty soft. I did really like the way it felt though. It's actually, one of the nicer pillows I've slept on, especially after only one use. I like the beauty rest better, even though it's only 50 bucks and this was 155. But side sleepers, that's exactly where you want it to be right there. I just felt, it felt nice from the very first use and it still feels that way. Number seven on my list is the Ninja Foodie. Now this is the newest item on the list. I only did it very recently and it might rank higher 
if I had more time to play with it, but it's a really good device. It works as an air fryer, as an indoor grill that has very little smoke, can be a dehydrator. It has a lot of uses. It's very versatile. I think the Ninja knocked one out of the park with a Ninja Foodi grill. It's a great item. Here's some scenes from my original Ninja Foodi review. We have the ceramic coated grill grate, the ceramic coated crisper basket, a ceramic coated cooking pot, which must be used at all times. As you can see, these are quite frozen. These are nine ounce uh, fillets. I think we might be good. All right, I think that came out pretty good. All right, let's open this up. And there you go, what do you guys think? I've got these, which I just prepared, potato wedges, Air Crisp, 390. And here we go. All right, it has been 20 minutes. Let's check these out. Looking pretty good. And there it is, what do you think? I think it's pretty good. Probably should let these sit before tasting them. And there we go, I think they came out pretty nice. I've got one layer of banana chips, lightly coated with lemon juice. All right, see you in the morning. Here we go. I will. I think it's, it's a dehydrated banana. I think it came out pretty much like I would expect. I want to try a couple of small steaks. These are a four and a half ounce and a six and a half ounce tenderloin. Whoa. Ooh, look at this. What do you guys think? I think it looks pretty good. So, uh, that was only seven minutes. But I think that all their advertising claims about what this device can do are accurate. I'm actually quite happy with it and I'm going to continue to use it. Number six on my list is the Rotato Express, which is a hands-free potato peeler. When I compared potato peelers back in August, this is the one that stood out to me. Even though it seemed a little bit gimmicky to me at first, I've actually found this to be faster and less messy than the regular way of peeling potatoes. So the Rotato Express definitely belongs on this list. Here are some scenes from my original potato peeler comparison. All right, we put the potato on the base. Ugh. And then we bring this down to hold it in place. So far, so good. Yes, yes. I'm going to raise the blade up to its highest possible location, and uh, let's just try it. Whoa! Whoa! That's what I'm talking about. Now that was pretty cool and effective. Check this out. Beautiful. Not only that, but you get this cool peel. Look at this. The kids would have fun with this. I bet you could have your kids enjoy pe peeling potatoes with this thing. Spiralizer, Rotato Express, no competition. This was faster, but look how much, look how smooth and uniform this one is. Spiralizer by hand, not so much. Number five on my list is the Power Smokeless Grill, which I reviewed in January of 2019. Now, a couple months earlier, I did one called the Gotham Smokeless Grill, which I was not very impressed with. So I compared the two of those, and I found the Power Smokeless Grill pretty much solved all the problems that I found with the Gotham. So to me, this one is an easy choice for my top 10. Here's some scenes from that review. Well, wow, that's a lot of stuff here. So uh, I need to familiarize myself with these instructions. We have got hamburger sizzle. This one only has the drip tray. This one's got the secret weapon. Boom! Got the fan. All right, as he's continuing to cook, you'll notice the smokeless grill does have a little bit of smoke coming off of it as the hamburgers get hotter. This one with the lid on, you can't really tell. Let's lift it up and see what we got. Looks like the fan is pulling most of the smoke in. Let's see if the fan without the lid on, see what happens. Oh yeah, the smoke disappeared. Oh, that sounds good. Let's see if I put this fan on. Gone. Put the lid on even more gone, so no smoke. Hey, I got a little bit of brown. But if I had to choose one of these, I would definitely go with the Power Smokeless Grill because grilling inside, the smoke is significantly less, and to me, that's the reason people are buying this. Number four on my list is the Shark Apex Zero M technology. That's been kind of a running joke in my family that my dogs have killed every vacuum that I've used, but this year they met their match. This is a very good pet hair vacuum that has withstood the onslaught of pet hair that my pets have thrown at it, so I think it certainly deserves a place in the top 10. Check out some scenes from that review. 
This is the Shark Apex vacuum with lift away zero M technology, supposed to be a great pet hair vac. This is a 30 foot cord by the way, so ample cord space. Again, just to compare, there was a little bit on the bristles here, significantly more on the ion flex, so it's definitely something that's working for this vacuum. This one, I barely have to clean it. This one I have to clean after every use. And she's gonna contribute a bunch of pet hair for me. Good girl. Here we go with the Shark Ion Flex. Now the Apex. Ion Flex, Apex. There's a difference. And I did clean these out. These were completely clean. I cleaned them out by hand before I started that test. So that's just that pile of hair picked up. This is the motorized pet tool. I, mean, I can feel that grabbing onto the couch. And look, I'm, I'm mobile now. So overall, I think this is a very good product. This is the Fantru dash cam, which I reviewed in a comparison video comparing to three other dash cams earlier this year. And I picked this one as my best one for that comparison and also one of my top products for the year. It's got two cameras, front and back, only uses one SD card. Quality of both cameras is pretty good. The quality of the audio is pretty good. The audio you hear right now is from the dash cam itself. I just think it's a solid dash cam and one of my picks for the top three of 2019. Here's some clips from my original dash cam comparison. All right, for mounting, the Vantru was probably the easiest. It uses a suction cup, which has held up quite well since I've been using it for over a week now. And I can actually do it one hand. You just press it against the window, slide the lever over, and that's it. And it stays pretty solid. Let's take a look at the daytime shots now. Let's first up, let's look at the Vantru. Vantru right now. We're gonna do the Vantru audio and video. All right, so this is the Vantru audio. How does the, how does my green striped shirt look on the rear camera? How does that look? All four of them together. Which picture looks best? Which picture looks best to you guys in the daytime? I know the nighttime, I had my favorites, but the daytime, let's see how they look. Now, I'm gonna just compare the two rear cameras from the Vantru and the M16. How do I look on these two? Put them side by side. How do those two look together? You see a... Uh see how it looks on a regular residential neighborhood. All right, so in the end, my pick for the best one obviously is the Vantru. Now, even though there is a slight blue tint to the Vantru, I don't think it affects the clarity, which is as good or better than the Garmin. It's the easiest to move once it's been mounted. It has the highest capacity SD card. I just think that this is the top pick. Number two is not a single item, but a collection of them from Dream Farm. I first ran across them when I was doing pizza cutters. And the SZA was my pick for the best pizza cutter. And then later on, I did a collection of Dream Farm items, such as the Klongs right here. And they're really just utensils that the company has kind of slightly improved. And their improvements all make sense. So I think Dream Farm definitely deserves a place high on the list for the best of this year. Here's some clips from my original pizza cutter comparison and my Dream Farm collection review. Oh, wow. Whoa, wait a second. That cuts really good. Whoa, whoa. I'm shocked at how well that did. Now you're supposed to be able to serve slices as well. So after you cut it, oh wow, look at this. I'm actually kind of a fan of this. Press the garlic and then when you are done, you push it and this is supposed to scrape off the excess. And then this button allows you to eject the peel. Oh, it worked. And? Whoa. Next up, we're gonna look at the clongs, which are the click lock sit up tongs. If you got food that's dripping, you can place it like that and the food will drip back in there and your food will not get on the counter and the germs in your counter will not get on your food. Let's try the sapoon. The handle does keep it off there. These are lavoons, which stands for scrape level measuring spoons. Each one of these has this little lever that allows you to scrape it off and level it off perfectly. Oh, that's a beautiful, look at that, perfectly level.
this is the Bedjet and my pick for the best product that I reviewed in 2019. This is the version 3. I reviewed the version 2. There isn't a huge difference between the two of them. This one just seems to fit under the bed a little bit better. And what the Bedjet is, it's a climate control for your bed. It pulls air in, pumps it up through this tube into your sheets. It can be cool air in the summer, warm air in the winter. The more I've used it, the more I like it. Now, I wasn't going to do an item this expensive for my top pick of the year, but when I was going over the items I did this year, I kept going back to which one do I use the most, which one do I enjoy the most, and this is the one. So for me, the Bedjet is the best of the year. I think it would be hard for me to give up the Bedjet at this point because I, I use it so much. But here are some clips from my original Bedjet review. So far it's looking pretty easy. Let's see what happens. Oh, oh, I feel it. I feel it. I am feeling air on my legs. But I want to show you what happens when you don't have a blanket on there, how the bed jet actually works. And here it goes. So again, you're supposed to put a blanket on top to hold it against you, but that's exactly how the process works. Now, BedJet gives you this remote here, which is certainly functional. They give you an app, which is even better. You can see the fan is certainly working well because it's actually blowing this up like a balloon. And I want to see how it compares to when I'm using the cloud sheet from before versus a regular sheet now. Let's try it. I've gotten settled in. I do feel this kind of cool breeze coming up from the bottom. It actually feels pretty good. The bed jet gets this air from the coolest part of the room, which is going to be on the floor. And you can actually set the temperature you want. One side of the bed is 77. Whoa. It's literally only been 15 or 20 seconds since I turned this on. If cost is not a factor for you, it's certainly something you might want to consider. It is the ultimate luxury in sleeping accessories. So there's my top 10, but there's a few extra items that I really wanted to include in this video that didn't make the top 10 that should be mentioned. So let's take a look at a few honorable mentions. Now over the summer, I did a few weird gadget videos. And in one of those videos, there was this stapler, which is actually not really a stapler because it doesn't use staples. It's a staple free stapler. Even though it seemed a bit gimmicky at first, it's actually something I use often. I actually reach for this over a regular stapler now. But here's some scenes from my original video. The plus staple free stapler. Oh! Oh wow, look at this. It did put a hole in the corner. It's actually a pretty big hole. Oh yeah, that handled that no problem. How well does it hold these pages? Pretty well. So your paper goes in there. And there it goes. So I think this is actually pretty cool. Now as an honorable mention, I've got to mention the Pizzazz Plus. It's not a new item. It's actually been around for a while, but it was new to me in 2019, back when I reviewed it in February. Now it looks more like an old school record player than a kitchen device, but it does a pretty good job of warming up items, making pizza, and it's very simple to use. So here's some scenes from that video. This is the Presto Pizzazz Plus rotating oven. It says 12 to 15 minutes. I'll put it right there. And that's really all there is to it. So I guess now we wait. Take a look at this here. Oh, we got crispy, crispy bottom there. Wow, 14 minutes. Timer went off, the heat shut off. And some of my commenters also said the same thing, that they felt that in the summertime, this is a good alternative to use in your oven. Hey, the bread actually feels toasted. The bread is toasted and the cheese is melted. I'm a little bit impressed right now. All right, I just wanted a small batch of cookies just to make sure they're spaced out and everything. So, but the timer just went off, so I'm going to take the pan off. Now I'm supposed to let it sit on the pan for three minutes. Wow, these came out pretty nice. No cold spots, that's good. I gotta say four, no, do I need to go any further? I think the test is over and the Pizzazz Plus is a resounding success. All right, so one honorable mention is the Arctic Air Ultra, which is a follow-up to an older version, the original Arctic Air, which I thought had some problems, but the one they released this year seemed to fix most of those problems. Now, it's not a perfect device, but I think that the fact that they improved it so much over the original definitely deserves a place to be mentioned in my best of this year. Here's some clips from my original Arctic Air Ultra video. He 
here is the power button. Ooh, okay, I'm feeling it. It feels nice and cool. Let's see how cool it is. All right, so here is the original Arctic Air with the Arctic Air Ultra. You can see there's some design differences. I definitely feel like this one blows much stronger than that one. So, you know, 60 degrees. Let's try the original. Oh, look at this. So I kind of like that they've actually taken the original and improved on it. The instructions state you can get the filter wet and put it in the freezer for even more cooling action. So I just pull out of the freezer and I'm going to see how cold it really gets. Let's check it out. That is cooler. So now we're getting uh, 49, 50 degrees. But to have it sitting there right in front of you, I think that it is cooler than a small fan. So I think that in that respect, they've done a good job improving the original. So that's it guys, that's my top 10 and honorable mentions for 2019. It's been a fun year. I appreciate you guys who've stuck with me. And I can't wait to see what 2020 holds. I'll see you next time.